Where do you want to start? There's a lot to say. Um, hi, my name is CJ Prince, and uh, I'm known to be a lot of different things. A streamer, YouTuber, musician, producer, but there's one title that I haven't publicly talked about, and that is that I'm a bomb technician. So for the last two and a half years or so that I've been making content on the internet and actively posting and streaming, making music, everything, um, I haven't been too public about my personal life. I've been kind of closed doors about certain things. I don't really like talking about what's happening uh, in my real life all that much just because certain things are kind of sensitive. But that part of my life is kind of coming to a close now. And I think it would be good to kind of talk about why we are where we are now. So when I say bomb technician, bomb tech, uh, I'm, I'm not exaggerating this entire time. I have been a explosive ordnance disposal technician. My job is literally to safe and defuse bombs, and it's a pretty interesting job. <laughs> All the while that I've been coming home from work and going live and streaming and making YouTube videos, uh, during the day, I've actually been at work putting on a uniform and be actively being a bomb technician in the United States Air Force. Yeah, I have been somewhat secretive about it, but there's been a running joke um, and topic that I'm an EMT, which is not technically wrong, so I didn't lie to you guys. I have my certification, and I am a medical expert and trained professional, but my primary focus and occupation has been explosive ordnance disposal. Uh, defusing bombs. That's what's really been going on behind the scenes. I guess the best place to start is all the way back at the beginning. We'll take it all the way back 2018. I was living in Los Angeles, California. I was broke beyond belief. I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything going on in my life. I was working at UPS and I hated my life. I just wanted to do something and just just get out of the current predicament and situation that I was in. And from family members and friends that I had that were close and, and dear to me who had been in the military, um, they made it clear that it was, it's a good out. That was all I wanted. I wanted to get out of California, I wanted to travel, and I wanted to do something exciting. I'm also kind of an insane person, so I looked for the most interesting and challenging job that I could think of to, to do that would just be a fun title to have. and. Explosive ordnance disposal kind of checked all those boxes. It's very difficult. It's one of the hardest uh, schools going through in the military. It's, you're dealing with explosives. I like blowing shit up. I like doing cool things like that. So it seemed like it was really appealing towards me. Um, so I enlisted into the United States Air Force and shipped out. And my first destination was in Texas. That's where you go for basic training. You spend about eight and a half weeks there. And then you stay in Texas, go to another base for your preliminary selection for explosive ordnance disposal. And that can take anywhere from 26 days to until you're done. And in my circumstance, that was about three months during the selection phase. Getting started, going through training, learning the basics, but the primary purpose of it is to test your mental strength of how how strong are you mentally and being able to push through all of that stuff, which is really just an excuse for them to push you to your limits. And then after that, you'll find yourself in uh, Eglin Air Force Base in Florida for the next year and a half of your life, learning how to actually be a bomb technician. And that was seemingly one of the greatest experiences of my life, um, just getting to live in a very beautiful vacation spot and learn the weirdest job expertise that I could possibly think of. And it ranges anywhere from dealing with explosives and, and learning how to safely handle and detonate things, all the way up to defusing IEDs and working with nuclear items. And it's, it's an exciting time. It's very challenging, very, very difficult, but they fire hose information at you and you're working Roughly 12 to 14 hours a day, going to school, doing PT, um, working out, 
uh, and then trying to manage it somewhere in there to sleep and wake up and get back into it. And then I got sent to Davis Montana Air Force Base. And that's kind of catches us up to where we are now. And uh, then we can kind of get into the details of everything. Um, for one, I haven't been too open about this because it is a very particular job. Uh, we handle very strange items. We handle very odd things. I don't really like having the notoriety of being in the military. It brings some negative connotations. Uh, some people aren't supportive of it, which I don't really care. Nonetheless, I didn't join for patriotism, to be honest. I joined for selfish reasons to just get out and take advantage of the benefits that they can offer you. Um, I know explaining and talking about this sounds like I have had the grandest and most fun time through my service, but that's the nitty gritty part that we get to get into to talk about because there's the dark sides of everything that you do that teaches you and matures you as an adult. And for me, it's largely been the military for the last five and a half years roughly of my life. It's shaped me and pushed me to places I never wanted to be, things I never wanted to do, things I never wanted to see. But it's also given me amazing opportunities that I would have never been afforded anywhere else. Um, for one, getting to travel around the entire world. I've been to 15, maybe 18 different countries now, um, just for work purposes and getting to see and meet crazy people, do some awesome things. Um, I've also been to some pretty terrible places for work and seen some pretty terrible things for work. It's finding the middle ground and the balance of those two that really kind of takes a toll on you mentally because the good stuff makes you want to black out the bad stuff and you just focus on the cool things you get to do and, and go and see. But then when you're alone at night laying in bed and everything's all quiet, it's when the dark stuff starts to, to cry out a little bit louder and you remember the terrible things that you've seen and, and have been a part of. And that's what's kind of pushed me to my limits on a lot of things. Um, and then furthermore into my career, I sustained a number of different injuries that have permanently damaged me um, that will prevent me from ever being normal and what I was before ever again, which it's a hard pill to swallow. And so kind of touch base on that. You know, we can talk about the cool things that I've done all day, but I'm not gonna sit here and brag about those things and act like I'm some kind of cool guy because I'm just a regular guy. It's just a normal job in the military. You just handle explosives and blow stuff up. I have been fortunate enough to be a part of really cool things that I am proud of, that I am glad we got to do. Uh, it's taken me to some strange places like getting to demolish hundreds of terabytes of uh, child. Fire in the hole! There it is. Nice. The job does not just entail eliminating explosive threats, but also getting rid of things that just should not exist anymore. And what better way than to detonate them with C4? and make them literally just become molecules and ash. Um, I've gotten to travel and see cool countries uh, and see and experience some really terrible things that I don't want to talk about. But all of this going on, I can't help but smile and laugh that the entire time, no matter what I was doing at work, that night I would come home by day diffusing bombs and by night making penis and poop jokes on the internet and having a good time laughing and streaming to all of you guys. And it's just that funny thought in the back of my head that like four hours ago, I just had my fingers deep into a bomb that I was safing and prevented an entire neighborhood from blowing up. And then I went home, turned on my computer and started streaming and making jokes about whatever. It's always been a really funny thought in my head and it's always been really silly to me, but all of that has taken a toll on my mental health and has pushed me to limits that uh, I don't like to think about, just some dark spots in my life. Being in the military and having such a unpredictable and unreliable lifestyle and not knowing, uh, there's been times I've gotten a phone call and I have to be on a plane in eight hours and flying to another country or a, across the entire country. And it throws a wrench into the entire plans if I have for that day, for that week, for that month, whatever it is. And 
those things will eat you up. Seeing everything that I've experienced that is like imprinted in your memory forever, those things mess you up. And you just feel a lot of forced independency. You just feel kind of alone a lot of the times. And this goes for any, any career field, any job, anything that you're doing. In some way, shape or form, it's hard for people to relate what you're doing. They, they can't really identify, they can't really relate to it, they don't see the entirety of what you're dealing with day to day. It doesn't matter if you're a plumber, an electrician, or a bomb technician. There's some part of your life that people can't relate to, the difficulties. And for me, it's the, the stress of that environment, that you're expected to be at this standard and be this specific person that I never really fit into that category. Um, I remember my first thoughts on, on the flight going to Texas for basic. All that was going through my head was that I fucked up. I made, I just, I just screwed up. I just threw my life away. Like, I am the most rebellious and non-authoritarian type of person. And I just signed my life away to listening and following rules to the furthest extent that you can possibly imagine for at least the next four to six years of my life. And that was the hardest pill for me to swallow. And, and kind of get over. And then moving into getting, when you get into full active duty and, and trying to be, trying to live in as an adult and just wanting to have the haircut that I want, have the facial hair that I want, have the jewelry that I want to wear, the shirts that I want to wear. And you have to ask permission to do all of that stuff. And it's always a resounding no. Or if you want to take a vacation and you just want to go see your family, you just want to go see your friends, and you have to ask permission to go do that. And they can just say no. A lot of those things builds up a lot. And the, the really terrible stuff that I have been through and had seen start to stack on top of that. And everything compounds and everything compounds and everything compounds and builds up and it becomes this messy, uncontrollable, dark ball of depression. I'm not gonna use this, this time to talk about the terrible things that I've seen and done because who wants to hear that? No one wants to hear that. I don't wanna think about it anymore. I want to focus on the good stuff. I want to use this as a time to move forward and talk to you guys, be transparent finally, and tell you guys what's been going on. Here's what's been my life. And furthering from this, now you guys can ask questions that I can actually answer. Because for the first time that I can remember in my life, I'm free. I can do what I want and think what I want, say what I want, wear what I want, and stream when I want because I'm not tied down to any silly time frames or contracts or anything like that anymore. Um, what I haven't touched base on is what happened through this entire time that I've been in the military and defusing bombs. Uh, well, my spine exploded. It killed itself, essentially, is what happened. And all of that stuff caused physical disabilities, physical handicaps for me that are a little bit demeaning, a little bit degrading, self-degrading for myself. It's not like anybody else is someone sitting there and pointing and laughing at me and calling me a cripple. It's, it's my own thought process because as a 26 year old adult, in my head, I should be full functioning. I don't, I don't wanna have to ask for assistance to take a shower or clean myself or get out of bed or put pants on or tie my shoes because I've been in that, I've been in that situation. It was, it was very difficult and it's very, uh, emasculating in a way, just in general, like not even just as a man, just as a human, it's dehumanizing. Because I was doing my job and something happened to me and now I can't walk properly anymore. Now I can't feel my right leg anymore. Now I have to be cautious to walking around outside so I don't step on a thorn and bleed all over the floor, which has happened multiple times. Start to get in your own head about it that you're just this silly little crippled person or handicapped person on a lot of different ways that I, I can't, I'll never be able to run again. I'll never be able to, to work out. I'll never be able to lift heavy things properly again. Those things build up in your head and you start to just decay on the inside. And I fell really far into depression at its deepest and darkest point because what was the point of everything? What did it matter? Because I couldn't walk. I couldn't, I couldn't keep healthy, mentally or physically. It was started, I started to get sick a lot more. Uh, it made me stop caring about my health in general, so I was just eating like crap. I wasn't wanting to do anything. I just looked bad, I felt bad, everything sucked. And 
I just wanted to die, essentially. I just, I couldn't take any more. That's why I talk about moving forward content be being so much more prevalent, because that's what saved me. That's what pulled me out of everything, was being able to, to make content and having a creative outlet, because all of that energy that I was putting into being, being healthy, I was super into working out before and running and, and taking care of my body, trying to look like, you know, in tip top shape, gaining weight and, and being a power lifter. All of that energy got devoted into creative outlets and being able to, to stream, make videos, make music again. All of these things that pulled my brain out of the dark parts and put it into the creative parts, still rather dark, I would say, but creatively. And I could process everything and it helped. And then all of a sudden, before I knew it, I had, you know, people who were watching my stuff. People I've never met before, random people on the internet, amazing people who became really, really deep into my life in the community of, of this content that we've created. And it's awesome seeing that. And that was such a, a inspiring time of my life that once I got the notice that I was getting medically retired from my job, and they were letting me go, essentially. It's the equivalent of getting fired because I can't perform anymore. That took another toll. And it hurt because the, the thing that I had spent the larger portion of my adult life working towards and doing is now stripped of me. And, and the military is really, really effective at giving you your identity and making you feel like what you do for a living is you. And that's who you are. And there was a struggle within me to shake that off for a long time because I'm watching all my friends and coworkers around me do the job that I used to do, that I was really good at it, that I, I liked. I, I did enjoy doing it. And now I just had to sit idly by and wait. Couldn't do anything. I couldn't even be a part of it. I got all of my capabilities taken away from me. And then someone just points at you and says, you're broken. We're getting rid of you, so I have to go through this entire process of getting out of all that and, and pretty much becoming a new human being. What does all this mean moving forward in the future? Well, for one, like I said, I can finally be transparent about everything, and you guys can have a further look into the silly and rather goofy things that I have been doing the last five and a half years of my life, and you guys can ask questions and I can openly talk about them, but more importantly, I'm going to be doing this. This is going to be my life now. I can, I'm can. i going to be making content and streaming more and making more music and shooting videos and, and taking on larger projects because I'll actually have the time for it now. I guess to wrap the entire thing up, we'll just talk about that's funny the entire time my job was defusing bombs. Now I'm getting out, hoping to blow up. <laughs>